Hi, in this short video what I want to do is show you how I can deploy ArcGIS server into Google Cloud's platform as a virtual machine. The advantage here is I don't need to have a computer on the internet 24-7. I can use Google Cloud to do that. Now this is also possible in uh, Azure, Microsoft's Azure, or AWS, Amazon Web Services. But Google Cloud Platform isn't used as much. And so I wanted to at least demo this so you can see how it works and how it was set up. So let's get started. So as I said, AWS is probably the most popular cloud hosting environment out there. In this case, Google's trailing behind, but it's a great solution and you have a lot of options in here. So to create a new instance, you just start the compute engine You'll have to approve the API. You'll have to have a funding source for it, so like a credit card. And what you do is you simply go create an instance. And in the creation of the instance, you can place it whatever location. You assign a name. And you pick one of the sizes of computers you'd like. So just a general purpose one. In this case, you can pick a very small computer. 4 gig is a little light, so we can bump that up to 8 gigs, for example, or whatever you would like. And you can see it does give an estimate of cost here. And down here, we can change the boot type. If you are savvy with Linux, you can use Linux and then deploy ArcGIS server in that. But a lot of people getting started are more familiar with Windows, so that's okay. So getting started with Windows is pretty easy. In this, it is more expensive. So you pick the operating system. In this case, you're going to pick a Windows Server. And you can pick the, the type that you'd like. You want to pick uh, the data center, not the core. The core actually removes the graphic user interface. So there's no interface to, to use Windows. It's just the raw operating system, sort of like Linux is, actually. So you just want a data store if you want, or sorry, a data center if you're going to be using it normally. And the gigabyte, 50 gigs is pretty light, but again, you can get started with that. That's not a problem. So then once you've selected all these, you can see the cost will go up significantly because there is a premium image charge for using the license of, our, uh, of uh, um, Windows. From there, you can allow HTTP traffic in. And if you're using ArcGIS server, you'll need that. So HTTPS traffic is likely all you need, but it's always a good idea to have both so it can redirect and it doesn't error out. And then you click create, it goes through, creates the server, and you end up at this. Now I'm not going to go through the creation process, I've already done that. And you can see the, the actual servers here, it is started. It does give you an external IP number, and you can copy that external IP number, but you'll notice that it's never given you a Windows password. So the way to get the Windows password is actually pretty easy. Inside of this little drop-down, there's this set Windows password. And what you do is you basically point it at the, the user you'd like to create, and it will either create the new user, or it'll uh, reset the password if there's already an account for that. So you can enter the username. It uses your, uh, in this case, your Google Cloud login. And you can use whatever you'd like as the username. And then you say set. It'll take a moment. It comes back with the password. Just make sure you write that password down as soon as you get it, because that is the only time you'll ever see it. If you forget it or need access again, as long as the server is running, you can rerun this, and it will reset the password for that. So that's how you get your password. And from there, you can actually log into the server. You can remote desktop to it. There is this download RDP file, but if you have the IP address, you can just use the remote desktop. I've set up a DNS entry to this, so I actually have a DNS entry to uh, point to that IP. But now I have my server, and I'm able to log in, and the server, I can do whatever I want on a normal Windows environment. And if you're not familiar with remote desktop, that's what this software is. All you do is go remote desktop. So I type in MSTSE, Microsoft Terminal Services Client. That's the old name for this, but it's remote desktop. Then you just enter the 
IP address of that server. So in this case, it's 34.41231.70, which this is dynamic, so it won't be that next time. I'm using a special port. It, you don't have to enter the colon 444 on yours. And then under options, you can also hit the display to make it full screen. You can connect and then enter your username and password. So I'll enter my username and then password. And sometimes this dialog might not allow you to enter a username. If it isn't allowing you to do that, there should be an option below saying more options. And then you can say, I want to use a different username. It's, it's a bit of a strange interface. It tries to default to your local user. And likely that's not the name of the user you want to log in with. From there, it'll pop up with this. Yes, I'm okay with this certificate. And then it actually connects in. And in this case, it's full screen. So now I have my remote desktop session. And of course, from here, I can do whatever I want on the local computer and browse around and change files. If I do need to copy files to the computer, here's a trick. From the desktop on the local machine, you can actually copy content. So if I have a file on my local machine, so I have this file I've just placed on my desktop right here. You can literally go copy of that file, go to the remote desktop, and let's go to the desktop here, and you can paste. And that will actually copy the file from your local desktop to the remote desktop. So that's a trick to be able to get data onto the other computer. So that's a, a nice trick if, you haven't, if you're not familiar with remote desktop. Another thing with remote desktop is this X. Uh, there's minimize, there's uh, make it a window. Uh, if it is full screen, you'll get this bar. If the bar is in the way, you can move it back and forth. But this X, this does not log you out or shut down the virtual machine. So if I click that, it does even warn me it's just going to disconnect. This is like turning your monitor off. The computer doesn't shut down and everything on your desktop will still be there. And if you notice on the desktop, I still have this Canada layer. But if you click this and I X out, now if I want to come back in, I have to actually bring back up the remote desktop, bring this back over, connect, and I need the password. And then it reconnects, and you'll notice that as soon as it connects, it goes right back to where I was before. In this case, the Canada folder is open. So that's how the remote desktop works with that virtual server if you're not familiar, familiar with it. Now it would be the same for AWS or Azure if it was a Windows server. For Google, uh, with it running, obviously I can do whatever I want with an ArcGIS server at this point because I've already installed it on this computer. And if you wanted to get this started, what you do is simply download ArcGIS server to the local computer and install it using the normal procedures. But there's something that's an important point if you're trying to do this in the Google Cloud Platform. There's actually a bug, and it's by design apparently, but at the same time it's, it's an obscure bug. When you try to run the ArcGIS server on the Google Cloud Platform, it will fail. It'll fail to create certificates and nothing will work. And the reason for that is the Google Cloud Platform adds a trailing dot. And there is actually a bug at Esri for this. They've said it's by design, so they're not going to make a change. And there's two solutions for this. One is change the Windows host file to have the fully resolved name of that system in that. Uh, and that way you can get rid of the dot at the end. The second solution is a little bit more involved, but it does take, you have to go change the configuration of the installed ArcGIS server. So once you've installed it, but you haven't got it licensed or running yet, and you make this change to have a host name in these files. And there's a whole documentation uh, related to that here. But here's the, the one trick. You actually have to get it to generate the SSL certificates with the software because that's what's failed. That's why it's nothing's working. So you have to kind of kick it in a way. And the only time that's done is when it's installed. And the way you need to do it is actually open up this folder and this will recreate 
the self-signed certificate. So let me show you on the server where that is. On this computer, ArcGIS server was installed into C colon slash programs, ArcGIS server, and the rest of the path is ArcGIS server, framework ETC, oh sorry, uh, framework ETC certificates, framework ETC certificates. And basically to get it to recreate these files, because this file uh, will be missing and that's why it's failing effectively. So to get it to recreate these simply with the server stopped, rename the folder. That's what I've done here. And you can see it generated new ones at that point. And that way it will recreate new certificates as soon as it sees that there are none there and uh, it'll be good to go. Then you can license your server and run it on the Google Cloud Platform virtual machine. So that's how you can get Google Cloud's uh, running ArcGIS server standalone, or if you wanted to run it as part of a federated server, that's how you solve those problems and uh, get it running. The only thing to be aware of, obviously, if your virtual machine is always running, it will cost, you'll, you'll be paying for that. If you want it to shut down on the virtual machine itself, you can do that really easily by simply going to the start, power, and shutdown. And because it's a server environment, it pops up this dialog just to be able to give you a reason. You don't actually have to pick anything. You can just hit continue and it will shut down. That will turn off the tap, it'll turn off the light switch so you're not spending as much. The only cost then is the storage of the virtual machine itself, the hard drive effectively, but you're no longer paying for the computing costs. If you can't get to log in or if you only have this up, you can also shut it down using the dialogs here. So if you have this selected, there's a stop option here. That stop will also turn it off and that way Again, just like a light switch, it no longer is charging you. You are, again, still going to pay for the hard drive associated with the storage of that on the environment. In this case, it's 50 gigs, but it's a, it's a small amount compared to the full cost of running the server all the time. With that server shut down, if you're just playing with it like I am here, just beware, any services that are published obviously will no longer be available because the server is off. So if you need those services, you have to restart the server and you need to give it some time to start. In my environment, what I've done is on the services to help speed things up, because on startup, sometimes things can start out of order and have issue. The RTA server I've done an automatic delayed start. And that delayed start, what it's gonna do is it's gonna start the server up, anything that needs to be there. Then after about two minutes of everything running fine, this will then start. So it does take three, four minutes for the ArcGIS server to become available in this case. Just something to be aware of. However, um, I've also changed this the web server, Worldwide Web Publishing Service. I've done it that with it as well, automatic delayed start. So with a limited memory system, this is a good way to get things started in a, a procedure. So that way, you know, this is the last thing to start. And that way you can log into the server, take a look at stuff if, if things are failing. But you need to give it about five minutes to start before you can actually start using these services. But once it's running, you can test out normal services. You can even enter the IP number associated with this. So if I go here, I can copy the IP. I can enter the IP, HTTPS, and then you can enter, in this case, through the web adapter. And it'll allow me to go, but beware, because I'm using an IP address, the SSL certificate won't work. Um, and, well, that should have come up, apparently. My service is, my server isn't running, but uh, that would bring that up. So let's check to make sure the actual server is running. Six, four, four, three. 
That way I'll go direct to the GIS server. And you can see it is running here. So that means there's something wrong with the web adapter. If I go back, that failed. So let's go to services and we'll fix that. This is one of the reasons why it's nice to be logged in. So oh, this is my problem. I'll show you why this is failing. It's not related to this, it's because I have a domain name associated with this. So I can't use the IP address to visit this. I have to actually visit it using the I, the actual name. And so my name for this is GIS server. And that'll work now. So the reason it failed is because my web server that the web adapter is installed into is requiring that this be entered so the HTTPS will work. And I can show you where that is setting. So in Windows, the web adapter is running in something called Internet Information Services. And Internet Information Services itself is the web server that comes with Windows Server. It's the native one that's in there. And on here, if I go and configure So with Internet Information Services Manager running on the local computer, what I can do is just go to the sites, pick, typically it's the default website, and you can go to bindings, and you can see my host name is entered in the HTTPS binding. So I can edit that. If I remove this, now if I go back, if I want to use that IP number, so it's HTTPS 3, 4, 4, 1, 2, 30, 170, and then ArcGIS REST services. That runs now. And that's the reason it was failing before is simply it was always looking for that URL. And if it doesn't have it, it just denies it. Now you notice that it's not secure in this case, and that's simply because you need to be using the actual SSL certificate domain name. So the SSL certificate was registered with this. And this one isn't, so therefore HTTPS doesn't work properly. And that's normal. That's okay. That the HTTPS fails because we would expect it on a demo machine like this. And there you go. Now I have my environment running. Uh, just don't forget to shut it down if you don't want it to continue charging you. If you don't need to use the desktop, you can log off. And this goes again for any cloud environment. And the services will still be available. So I can still try to go into the different services. Obviously, I'd have to pass through the web adapter, go, go direct against the RTA server manager to make this work for the manager. But I can still use it, even though I'm not logged in on the computer. It's a server. The server is meant to be always running. Once I shut down that server, and I could do that from in here by selecting this and hitting stop, and that will shut down the server properly, then this will go to a stop. This won't be available, this won't be available, any published services won't be available at that point, and that's when the tap is turned off. But you do not need to be logged into the computer to be able to make it run. And actually, I'd ideally say don't log into the server to make it run, because if you are logged in, it's taking up memory for your login. And if you want it to run in the cloud environment, you want it to run inexpensively, you want to keep the memory footprint as small as possible. So why take up extra memory if you're not using that login? And there you go. That's a little bit of a tour of Google Cloud Platform running ArcGIS server in a standalone environment for use on either just demos or potentially in a production environment. Thank you.